to create a logical list of locations that your project can use, I recommend creating a project structure and location structure early on in your design. In this case, I have a projects command manager here at the top of my screen, and I have access to a locations menu. In here, you will notice the locations manager. The locations manager will show the name of the project, your top level locations, and any sub locations. Perhaps in this case, we want to show a location for the main system as well as the main electrical closet. We may also have other sub locations that are for the control panels that the operator of the machine will use. Let's go ahead and create a new location. A top level location can be created by right mouse clicking on the bolter and choosing new location. Here, I can then accept a mark number. It's incrementing automatically to L2. And here I can give it an English description for that location. I'm going to call this the operator controls. I will choose OK and see that it belongs to the top level bolter. If I want to create a sub location, I can right click on the location I want it to be part of and create a new location. And I can call this the faceplate for that operator control box. And you can see that it lives underneath that now. Locations can also be managed in the component browser tree. As you can see, I now have those locations, and I can also create new locations in the similar way. Let's go ahead and create some other symbols. I need a terminal strip, and I also want to create some operator control type objects. In this case, I will go to my line diagram menu and insert a symbol, and I will browse to the terminal strip. I'm going to just turn off the automatic mark setting while I'm here. So here I'm going to choose a terminal strip and I'll pick that description of it and I'll place that terminal strip right here. Now, of course I want that to default to the chassis of the terminal strip in the box. These symbols can be modified so I can actually drag these rectangular grips around and it will actually expand. It might actually be useful to show a terminal strip looking like a strip here on the screen like so. Now let's go ahead and choose the control panel faceplate object. I'm going to choose the insert symbol again and browse for another device. I want a button and a switch. Perhaps I want an emergency stop button. And I will place that down here at the bottom of my screen. And I'm going to set that to a location for the faceplate of the operator controls. A nice way of graphically displaying the locations to the user reading this diagram is to use a location outline. Location outlines can be extracted from the line diagram menu. Here you'll notice I can create a rectangular outline or an outline with a polyline. I'll choose a rectangular outline. There are several options for the location outline. Under the onboard options, I can choose the line style for the outline. I'll choose a thin board outline. I will choose a zigzag symbol, which denotes that I could use this board outline in many locations throughout the project. And I can also set a default location label that would appear for describing that location. In this case, I'm going to choose the default label, so I'll leave that unchecked. I can draw a box around any objects that I want to place in that location, and then it will present to me the actual location selector. In this case, I will choose the faceplate. And if there's any object in here that is not part of that location, we can change it right at that point in time. So there's the default label called faceplate. So this really makes it clear as to what's happening. So if we drop in another symbol, in this case, I'll choose another type of button or switch. I'll choose the switch symbol and drop it in here. It will automatically locate itself into the faceplate. 